Well, thank you for the invitation and uh, especially your uh, friend Bansi. Okay, I'm going to talk to you for the next 20 minutes on uh, mostly on uh, the secular trends in not only just diabetes, but cardiovascular factors in the Indian population based on the epidemiological work that we have done uh, in the, um, you know, especially in the southern part of India. And uh, uh, you know that uh, we have seen the not uh, the prevalence of diabetes all over India in the ICMR study, but unfortunately, this study has shown a lot of heterogeneity and uh, been done in uh, about eight to nine years. So uh, we we want to concentrate on southern part of India, where we are actually been doing studies for the last twenty years. So we have consecutive surveys done in three parts of uh, Tamil Nadu, which is a city like Chennai, a, a town and also a village to see what is the trend in the increase and in the prevalence of not only just diabetes, but also cardiovascular risk factors in the population. So this is actually published in Diabetes Care a couple of years ago. It's called the Stride IE study, secular trends in diabetes in India, change in the prevalence in the last 10 years, because we have done studies in 2006 and 2016. And as you can see in the specific particular slide, there has been an increase, significant increase in the prevalence of diabetes from 2006 to 2060s in the city from 18.6 to almost 22 percent, in the town from 16.4 to almost 20 percent, and in the village from 9.2 to 13.4. And interestingly, there are two points here in the slide. We found that the increase was significant in the female population in the both in, this, in, in all the uh, areas that we study, city, town, and the village, while in the male population, it was significant only in the village. So the explosion of diabetes is occurring in the village in both the genders. And we also find that the towns are almost reaching the same prevalence rate as the cities. So we are going to see a big explosion of the epidemic of diabetes in this country. Uh, we find that actually the significance, if you look at the increase is actually occurring mostly in the rural population compared to, this is the relative increase, percentage increase in the prevalence of diabetes in the last 10 years showing there has been almost 45% increase in the villages while it is only 16% in the Chennai city. So that is a big difference. Then we are looking at the factors. If you look at what are the factors which would have contributed, this is only just giving you the mean differences in body mass index, waist circumference, and diet between 2006 and 2016. And as you can see, most glaring difference is that the waist circumference in the city has increased from 83.7 to almost 88, in the town from 82 to almost 87, and in the village from 78 to 81. So people are actually putting on weight especially increasing the central adiposity. There has been, of course, a one unit increase in the BMI. And of course, there has been also been an increase in the total calorie consumption. Now we are going to look at which are the factors which actually contributed. When you do a Poisson regression, of course, other than positive family history and age, most important modifiable risk factor was not just the body mass index, but it was the base circumference. So in other words, even if you're in, in, in the last 10 years, the increase in the prevalence of diabetes was mostly contributed by increase in the in, increase in the waist circumference, which is actually a central adiposity. And then we also find in the villages, there was also an increase in the uh, decrease in the physical activity, mostly because of the explosion of uh, uh, the televisions in the rural population. So, now we look at what are the what is the actual increase in the prevalence of diabetes, which is called the adjusted prevalence ratio. When you adjust for all the variables which are significant, like family history, obesity, diet, education, physical activity, you find there is a 39% increase, which is in the town, and 34% increase in the villages, which is unexplained. So there is a natural increase in the prevalence of diabetes, which cannot be explained just by the known risk factors of diabetes. We also find that the trend in pre-diabetes, in fact, the total pre prevalence of pre-diabetes, which includes 
IFG, IGT, and IGT and IFG together has increased from 12.4 to 19% in the city, from 6.1 to 21% in the village seven. So this is important because these are undiagnosed people with impaired or intermediate hyperglycemia, which will increase the risk of cardiovascular risk factors as well as cardiovascular events, because we know that pre-diabetes also have increased cardiovascular risk. Now, I'm sure that now the most important interest that we have is, well, we know that diabetes is increasing and exploding. What is happening to the cardiovascular risk factors in the population? We were lucky that we were, during the same survey, we also looked at hypertension and, of course, dysglycemia, which includes impaired glucose tolerance as well as diabetes, and then dyslipidemia because we looked at their fasting lipid levels and looked at obesity levels. So these are the four risk factors. So and we just again published uh, a couple of years ago in uh, diabetes and research and clinical practice called the stride eye study cardiovascular. So what you find here is that, as I already explained, the BMI waist circumference as well as uh, general adiposity as well as uh, all gone up in all the population. So exactly what was happening was that this is the percentage change, age adjusted prevalence of hypertension, which has gone up in the urban population from 21 to 26%, dysglycemia from 31 to 41%, and dyslipidemia from 47 to 54%. A pretty, uh, you know, considerable increase in the prevalence of these uh, risk factors. So this is explaining why they have an increased cardiovascular even rate in the Indian population. Even in the rural population, hypertension did not show an increase, by, but dysglycemia increased from 17% to 28%, and dyslipidemia increased from 29% to 42%. So this is showing you the poison regression that uh, increase in the different uh, population, in the urban population, as you can see, there was a 42% increase in hypertension, 46% increase in dysglycemia, and 15% increase in dysglycemia. But in the rural population, as you can see, there was an almost 72% increase in diabetes plus intermediate hyperglycemia, which is a very, very drastic increase. And there was about 40% increase in, in, hyper, in, in dyslipidemia or lipids. We now looked at the what is called the poison regression to analyze what is the adjusted and unadjusted prevalence of increase. As you can see, hypertension, the increase is 42%. And uh, when you do modeling, then you come to 23%. And further adjustment, it comes to almost uh, 18%. And this adjustment is done according to what is shown in. Model one is the adjustment done for age and gender. Model two is adjusted for uh, other variables, including body mass index. So it comes to one point. So now there's an 18% increase in hypertension, which is unexplained. As far as dysglycemia is concerned, there was a 46% unadjusted prevalence, which came to 26% when you do a, in the model two. In the in dyslipidemia, again, it came to about 8% from 15%. So therefore, you have explained an unexplained increase in the prevalence of cardiovascular risk factors. Now comes the rural population, which is much more interesting, as you can see that dysglycemia increased almost by 52% in the rural population, which is unexplained, and dyslipidemia increased by 26%. So all these are explanations to tell you that there is a very heavy burden, not only of just diabetes, but cardiovascular risk factors in our population. Now, what is happening to the trends in the clinics that you see? You, I gave you the population data. Now, what about the clinics? So what we did was we have computerized data in our large clinic where uh, patients are seen by about 10 or 12 diabetologists. And so we looked at what is happening in 2009 and 2018, a period of a decade in the change in the profile, clinical profile. And as you can see that what is shown here is that we had almost 10,000 patients in 2009, 11,012, and 2015, and 2018. And what you can see here is that less than 30 years of age actually increased from 0.8 to 1.4%. And 30 to 49 years 
increased from 21% to 27%. In other words, it looks as if there is an increase ratio of young people having diabetes in our uh, clinics. So that's very important. Next comes to the BMI. If you look at lower down, more than 30, we came 22 to 25 because we see more obesity also occurring. So what is shown in the population in the epidemiological study is being mirrored in the clinics of, uh, the, of the Indian doctors. So what you can see is that more and more younger people are getting diabetes and you also see more and more obese people coming into the clinic. So both obesity is increasing and younger people are developing diabetes. We also looked at whether we are actually changing our therapy in the last 10 years. And what is happening is that uh, probably it is happening, triple or more therapy. That is the number of drugs that we use is increased. If the percentage of people using three drugs or more for treatment of diabetes has increased from 57% in 2009 to 73% in 2008. So that is an important eye opener. We are more using more drugs to treat diabetes. If you look at the type of drugs prescribed for type 2 diabetes, there has been an increase, decrease in the only OED group, and there has been an increase in the use of insulin, which is probably good or bad from 21% to 31%. In fact, in fact, we may have more and more people with longer duration of diabetes requiring insulin or in clinics. So the use of insulin has increased almost 10%, which is actually almost 100% uh, increase in the use of insulin, from 21% to 31%. Uh, change in the glycemic, one good news in the clinic that we have in our own center, where about 12 uh, doctors are saying that about 9% HPA1C came down from 35% to 29%, which is actually a welcome change and showing that, that we are actually improving the control. And less than 7 increased from 21% to 22%. Well, regarding hypertension, the types of drugs used in hypertension, we have been using more ARBs from 24% to almost 31%, and we are also using more calcium channel blockers. It may be interesting to see that the use of statin and its effects on total cholesterol, especially LDL cholesterol from 2009 to 2018. As you can see in the top, the use of statin has increased from 36.5% to 55%, which is actually pretty uh, welcome change. The mean cholesterol level also came down from 178 to 154. And more importantly, the LDL cholesterol significantly came down from 105 to 82.5. So probably I can claim that uh, the use of statins as well as the changes in cholesterol levels are probably uh, going showing a good change in our uh, center. Next, uh, before I finish, I want to tell you that are you diagnosing diabetes early in the Indian population? I had a question in my mind whether there is a delay in the diagnosis of diabetes in our clinics. So what we did was we selected 12 centers from southern states. All the subjects who were getting diagnosed, newly diagnosed diabetic patients were actually screened and the diagnosis of course WH. So in the clinics, in the visit to the doctor, we are capturing patients who are coming to the clinics. At the same time, they have undiagnosed diabetes in the population. So how are we capturing that? For, so we compared the data from the undiagnosed diabetes in the population with the newly diagnosed diabetics in the clinics. And that will give us whether there's a delay in the patients coming to the doctors for diagnosis of diabetes. Now what is shown here is the HPA1C and also the um, I mean, the age and the BMI of the patients and that there's a, no big difference. But more importantly is the blood glucose and HPA1C. What you can see here is that the HPA1C of clinically diagnosed patients was 9.1%, while the HPA1C of the undiagnosed population 
in the population around you is about eight point. So there's a delay. They are not coming to you early when they get diabetes. Now, more than or sixty-eight percent of patients who are getting diagnosed have more than eight percent, and forty-five percent of patients who are getting diagnosed in the clinics have an HbA1c of more than nine. While in the population, only twenty-six percent of patients have an HbA1c of more than nine, which is actually an eye opener to us. In other words. either we are diagnosing them very late or the patients are coming to the clinics much late and therefore we may probably be requiring more than two or three drugs very much unlike the american or the european population so there's a delay in the diagnosis of diabetes in our clinics because the hba1c is 9.1 at diagnosis compared to 8.3 with the hba1c of the undiagnosed diabetes population in the But the, so conclusions: a clinical diagnosis of diabetes is very much delayed in India. Almost 68 to uh, percent of HPA one sees more than eight. 45 percent of patients had uh, uh, HPA one see more than nine percent, compared to only 22 percent in the United States. So therefore, initial treatment itself would need more than a single agent. The late diagnosis has many implications: high possibility of having diabetic complications even at diagnosis, which all of us know. And high risk of increases when they contract infections such as COVID-19. So the take-home message from my talk is that there's a high prevalence of diabetes and cardiovascular risk in our populations, and it looks as if the tsunami is still on. People with diabetes carry higher risk, and early treatment and our hypoglycemia probably is avoiding. The profile of diabetes in the population is changing, needing more aggressive therapy of multiple comorbidities. And as I showed you earlier, the diagnosis of diabetes is usually delayed with high HbA1c. Thank you.